an amazing privilege for us all to be here. I just want to briefly introduce um, the core of our dev team, and all, all of us are here today. So we've got um, Dustin over here, who's our tech lead, and Mei Lin, who's our QA tester, and Jingen, who um, <clears throat> works on our back end. Sean is our CTO, and Tracy is our director of educational outreach. So I'm really glad they were all able to come. And um, we really appreciate the opportunity to present what we're doing. And we'll have a little twist in the story um, halfway through. Um, I think one of the first things I wanted to say is that this is actually a model of the classroom of the future, for sure. You know, no one is sitting in rows facing me anymore. Everyone's sitting in groups facing their computer or each other. And that's really, um, you know, it's about being connected and um, not about the sage on the stage. So I am not the sage on the stage, number one. Um, so I'm going to just bring you through. Um, I want to put what we're doing in, in context. Uh, the context is really what I like to think of as the power of open and what open really means. These slides are borrowed, uh, remixed with the permission of David Wiley, who's really, um, in my opinion, the sort of OER guru uh, of the US and a very important um, figure uh, from, uh, he's out west, he's been with, uh, he's now with Lumen Learning and he's done a lot to promote the use of um, open resources and he freely invites us all to scavenge his slideshow and this is a perfect example of what an open resource can really do. Um, and you can scavenge mine because I've given you permission to do it and I'll explain what this license means later for those who don't know. But actually, before I, I do that, who, how many of you are familiar with open educational resources? Okay, some. Good, okay. So, basic open describes educational artifacts. It's, uh, it's generous, it's sharing, it's giving at its core. And today we have an unprecedented capacity to share as we never have before. And technology here is to enable more sharing. Technology is, is not here to provide a magic bullet and solve all our problems, um, even if we wanted to. It's, but what, what it's really good at is to help us to share and connect. So an open educational resource is shared knowledge in digital form. The term was first adopted by UNESCO in 2002 at a higher education forum on open courseware and based on the first experiments of MIT open courseware. So at the core of the meaning of open educational resource, or OER, I'm just gonna say OER from now on, um, it's less of a mouthful, is the concept that such a resource can be reused, redistributed, revised, and remixed. And so most people, when they hear about open educational resources, they think, oh, it means free. Now, it is free to access and use online, but that's not really the power of, of the resource. It's not really the concept um, at its core. This is um, the, what's powerful about the OER movement, which is now a global movement, um, very, very strong in the US, strong in the UK, in Africa, in Brazil, in India, uh, in Korea, in many parts of the world, because OERs and the OER movement are, are enabling much greater access to education. And so one of the things that really inspired me early on with this project, which is now in its second year, um, is that I saw a photograph of a classroom in Africa with a dirt floor and every kid had a smartphone. And I realized, you know, that classroom is connected to the rest of the world in a way that would not have been possible before. And that really, really excited me. So at its core, our, although our work isn't specifically about that, um, that's the spirit in which we're, we're developing what we're doing. So an OER is a high quality, openly licensed, online, accessible online and shareable. So it's copyleft versus copyright. This concept comes from the open um, source movement in software. And copyright actually forbids copying, distributing, and editing. So that's at the core of what we have. So when we're dealing with a licensed textbook or a, licensed research, a copyrighted license of any kind, it may be free, but you're not free to copy, distribute, or edit it. And that's what's really, really important here. 
So the sharing of OERs are enabled by a new system of copyleft licensing developed by Creative Commons. And what's really amazing about this, I'm going to move over here, is here's a simple table that shows you what you can do the, the four um, uh, up, you know, green thumbs basically are the most open form of license. There are six types, and they go from do whatever you want with it to um, you can't create a derivative and you can't use it for commercial purposes. So, but, so it's really, the, the, the spirit of Creative Commons is some rights are reserved. So it's not that there's no copyright, it's a different type of copyright. Um, so, however, the, the OER movement likes to suggest that we should use this as our default license, meaning share it, do what you will with it, but attribute authorship. And that's what this little um, symbol is about. Not everyone's ready to do that, actually. A lot of authors are still down here. But some of them, uh, you know, led by people like David Wiley, are all the way up here and sharing absolutely completely. So it's the fastest growing category of learning content. This is actually only goes up to 2008, but it shows the growth from 2002, essentially, to 2008. So you can see that um, red curve. And these are some of the countries where they're uh, most used. Um, and what it ties into in this country is the fact that our, our textbooks and, and course materials are totally unaffordable. So that's where OER starts to meet some problems that we're trying to solve. Um, one of the main limitations at the moment is that it's really hard to find exactly what you want efficiently because of the internet search overload. So what's, what's happening right now is that there are initiatives of various kinds, I'll talk about um, one of them in particular, that are trying to create a cloud within the cloud for educational resources. Um, even Google is in on it. So the solution that's been developed so far in terms of making the discovery um, of educational resources, open resources, um, much easier, is, there a, is, is an initiative called LERMI for short, which was developed by the American Association of Publishers, the US government, and various others. And the idea is to develop a common metadata framework for describing or tagging learning resources on the web. So that when you go and you do a search, if you're an author of, of uh, or, or, or you're looking for you know, a particular type of resource, if you look for it, if it's tagged to a LERMI metadata standard, that resource is going to come to the top of your search, and any resource that's tagged in that way. So that's something that we're um, also going to be working with. But at the core, now that we've talked about the resource, is the fact that OERs have a particularly strong um, value to teaching and learning today and to the teaching and learning models that we've been developing. Notably, uh, well, the reason for that is that they're inherently student-centered as opposed to teacher-centered. And that's where learning is going. By freeing content, networking users, encouraging the exchange of customized educational content, which is at the core of the idea of open resources, we fall right into the agenda of blended learning, hybrid learning, online learning. So it's, a, it's, it's really a perfect mechanism for Instru instructional innovation, and as I said, it's ideal for blended, hybrid, and, and personal learning environments. So there's the idea of customizing teaching and personalizing learning. I, don't, I know I'm preaching to the choir, so I'm not going to say too much about that. Um, so what Open Assembly is doing um, is trying to facilitate blended, hybrid learning using open resources, um, and we're working on enabling customized teaching and personalized learning. So those are, that's really the most important part of our mission. And I'm going to describe the ups and downs of that mission later so I can be totally transparent with the process that we've been going through to actually develop this platform and how we got to where we got to. So at the core, um, we want to enable any teacher to customize a curriculum with drag and drop ease using any resources that they wish. And we want a student to be able to engage those resources in an interactive environment and to be able to shape that environment based on how they learn best. So that's really the core of our mission. And um, of course, the OERs we're talking about are 
um, any open resources ranging from text to rich media and everything that we don't even know about yet, um, including, anyway, so on the one hand, we have tools for the educator, um, a simple intuitive interface for assembling and managing digital curricula to easily assemble learning re resources, to easily manage digital rights, to monitor student progress and engagement using analytics, uh, to enable comments highlighting for PDFs, that, that's sort of where we are now, which is what's going on with open textbooks. So you've got a little bit more than a PDF uh, on the text side of things. And to personalize learning for groups or individual students. Some of these things were already there. Some of these things are sort of on the dev map for us. And to curate and share um, OER collections with colleagues around the world. So that's kind of at the uh, outer edges of our mission. We're not quite there yet, but that's where we're going. And for the learner, we've developed an environment that we're, that we're calling the course pilot which is an interactive personal learning environment. Um, you can engage the curricula that are assembled by the instructors, shape it according with how you learn best. It's available on any device, soon available offline. Um, the idea is that wherever this course pilot finds the student, that the student can basically take that with them for the rest of their learning days, which hopefully are very long. And so it's not about course specific content or a textbook or anything like that that you know may expire it, the idea is we're we're all lifelong learners hopefully and we need something that we can shape ourselves and that basically the resources or the courses intersect our learning process.